Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with a polymer clay tutorial. Today we're gonna make something super easy. Um, it's gonna be a beginner project. I like doing beginner projects. Um, we might move into more advanced things down the, the line, but um, a lot of the people who subscribe to my channel are usually beginners with polymer clay. So uh, today we're gonna make some fun beads. Um, not a pendant, we're gonna make some beads. Uh, I'm uh, custom mix this color. There are some air bubbles in there, so I gotta get those out. And sorry if you hear my dog squeaking on her squeak toy. <laughs> when I am doing videos, she thinks that that's the fun thing to, to do in the background. So I custom mixed this color. It is um, one part uh, Primo Fuchsia, Sculpey Primo Fuchsia, to two parts um, Primo Accents Translucent, and two parts Primo Accents Pearl. So um, I used, you know, I think of like 10 grams. I used my um, scale to, wet, to measure it, but you can use um, a cookie cutter, whatever you want to do to measure it. Um, I used 10 grams of fuchsia and 20 grams each of Primo Accents Pearl and Primo Accents Translucent. So I mixed those up in my um, clay machine and I'm gonna kind of air, uh, puncture these bubbles just get something sharp. I, you can get a needle tool. I have skewers right here. Just kind of do that, flatten them out, and then roll it back through your pasta machine so you don't have any um, bubbles showing. And I don't think I have any on this side. Um, so I'll roll those through this through again. This is actually the thickest setting on my pasta machine. And then I folded it in half and um, left it doubled. So I'm gonna go ahead and redo that so I can get those air bubbles out. But first, I wanna show you everything else I'm using. For now, <laughs> we might use some more products later in the video. Um, I'm also using this heart-shaped cutter. We're gonna make some Valentine's Day beads. Um, this is from From the Heart Supplies. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, then we're also going to use um, something to texture with, and I haven't decided our texture yet. So I have these, um, embossing folders because you can texture on both sides of your bead. So this one has a heart and flowers. I was shocked that I didn't have just a tiny heart um, embossing folder. So I'm a little, I'm gonna have to go on the hunt for one now. Um, and then I also just have the polka dot one. You want something a little tiny because you wanna be able to fit it in your um, cutter. If you have a huge pattern, you're not gonna be able to see it in a tiny cutter. Now, if you're making a pendant, you could do that too. I got this one from mm, probably Hobby Lobby, yeah, on clearance, and it's got flowers. So I haven't decided which one we're gonna use yet. We might test them all to see which one's best. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, re-roll this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have it re-rolled, and it's nice and smooth now. Um, if two times or two, twice the thick thickness of your thickest setting on your pasta machine isn't a thick enough bead for you, that's totally fine. You can um, do three thicknesses, so I have some extra to the side here. You could just put another um, layer on and then roll them together. That's totally fine. I'm gonna try it with two, and then we'll see how that goes. And if it doesn't work, if I, we want something else, something thicker, we can go that way, um, that route. I'm going to, I'm gonna try these little polka dots, I think. And um, there are several ways that you can do this, but the way that I'm going to do it today is I'm going to put my piece of clay in between my two plates of my embossing folder. And I'm actually gonna do it this way. And then I'm gonna smush my embossing folder. And now you can press, if you don't have a roller, you can press with your hands, you can use a wine bottle. <laughs> uh, it's five o'clock somewhere. And, or you can use um, like a, um, a tomato sauce jar, you can use anything. You don't have to use specific tools for polymer clay um, if you don't have them. Uh, or if you just wanna save for the specific tools like embossing um, folders and other things like that, you don't, you know, spend more money on your clay. Don't, don't, if you have something around the house that works, don't, don't waste money. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead. You can put either cornstarch or water, a thin layer of water on your um, embossing folder to make sure that it doesn't stick to your clay, but I think we'll be okay if not famous last words, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and roll in an even pressure over my clay. All the way to the end and then we have our a clay sandwich right so we're gonna go ahead and open this up 
very carefully. Now, the one side wasn't as embossed as I'd like it to be, and one side is super embossed. I think I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll it, just try it one more time, and um, because I love how clear this pattern is, um, I'm just gonna put it back through my clay machine. That's why I love polymer clay. You can't, it's never gonna, it's not gonna harden and you can't, you can manipulate it until you're ready to bake. So I'll okay, be, I've re-rolled my clay, took out any air bubbles that um, came up and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna press a little bit harder this time. I was trying not to get my clay stuck, but I think I did that to the detriment of my, um, my piece. So the part where the clay is going, or I'm sorry, the embossing folder is going into the clay is on the top right now. And that's that was on the top um, before. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the bottom. So most pressure's coming where the, the pattern has to raise up. That was the issue we had with the last one. It, wasn't, it just wasn't showing as well. So I'm gonna push down and I'm gonna slowly, and you can go back and forth if you want because that guy's not going anywhere. And then we're just gonna roll back and forth until we think we're getting a great impression. Use some elbow grease there. And since this is not moving anywhere, you can do other things. You can hit it like that. Sorry if that was loud. You can use, you know, pressure. You can step on it if you want. <laughs> Although in that situation, you might squish your clay a little bit too much. So, okay, let's try again. And look how wonderful our impression is, or our, I should say, um, uh, depression I should say because it pops up is there and we want to slowly pull it away because we don't want to distort it too much and we don't want to um, thin our clay so there is our nice texture and I think we'll end up using some paint or something maybe some mica powders once we get the beads cut because we want to raise those up but you can always just leave them pink because this is a great color. Now I do want to warn you, if you use pearl, your, <laughs> hi Goldie, <laughs> your piece is subject to coming out a little bit darker. Um, that just happens with Primo Pearl. Um, I've heard it doesn't happen with like Kato clay and I haven't tried Kato or um, Fimo pearls before. So um, this might get a little bit darker and we'll see that once the, the piece is finished. Okay, so. I have my cutter from From the Heart Supplies. It's such a cute little asymmetrical heart. And I'm just gonna make a bunch of cuts here. So there's our first one. And I'm doing this on paper. So paper is not going to um, get the piece stuck to it. And you just wanna be very careful. You can use a paintbrush here. You can use the side of your finger. You don't wanna use your fingernail to pump it out because that will show in the print of your your bead. Okay, so here's our bead. And like I said, you can make this as thick as you want. I think that's a good thickness for a bead. Let's see if I can get it. I mean, you can see my uh, fingerprints. Some people don't like fingerprints, some people do. I kind of just smooth them out as I can while I'm working. We're gonna set this to the side, let that cool down a little bit because um, it's pretty malleable right now. But we are going to want to smooth out the edges and then we will um, poke a hole. All right, so we'll go, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna make myself a batch of beads here. I'm really liking the um, relaxation part of making beads. If you guys are part of my bead group, you would have seen that I made beads last weekend and it was just so much fun and so relaxing. And, and nobody else is gonna have your same beads because you made them. And you can do them any way you want. And we can make these into earrings. I'm not going to make anything, I don't think, with these today. I have to think on it because they're so cute. I can make a chain of hearts. Um, I believe there's a cutter set. I, th I think you can get these in multiple sizes. So you can do um, like a variated necklace with these. Oh my gosh, that would be so cool. You can make fringe out of these. All right, so we have five hearts so far. We're, we already have five beads. This is so calming. And then um, if you don't like them, the good thing is roll your clay back up, make something else. 
never bake something you're not sure about because um, even though you can do stuff with baked clay, um, you don't have to, and you could just re-roll it. The worst thing you could do is make mud uh, scrap clay, and that's not a bad thing. You can use those as bead fillers, and sometimes mud colors are pretty cute. So, okay, I have this much left and some over here. I still have tons. How many beads did I make? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna go ahead, roll this. I'm gonna make a, um, not, I'm gonna make it so I have 10 beads, and then I'll be back. Okay, so we have 10 hearts. Um, what I wanted to point out is, I'm gonna grab one that's a little bit more set. Uh, one, if you have a cutter, and it, most of the time, even if it's a metal cutter, you're gonna have some um, unclean edges. So what you wanna do is lightly hold your piece and run your finger around the edge, edges, and that will reduce the amount of sandings you, sanding you have to do. I'm not saying you, it will stop you from having to sand, but it will absolutely be 100% more easy on you if you are cleaning up your edges before you bake. Now, if, you're, if you have a teeny tiny thin piece, absolutely let it cure, bake it. Um, don't try and pick it up because you might it might be too fragile. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean up all of these beads and then we'll come back and we'll uh, move to the next Okay, one. I've cleaned up my beads as much as I can for now. And I have decided um, we have so many different ways that we can finish these off. But today I'm going to use some mica pigments. This one is Interference Blue Pearl um, from the Heart Supplies. It says RJ Crafts, but they've renamed and they're from the Heart Supplies uh, now. They have several different colors and I'll link these below. I just love the way and I need more colors of these. This is the only color I have is the, the blue pearl, but they have like red, green, purple. I know you can see it's white, and if you but if you use it on um, black clay, it'll show up like an iridescent blue. It's really cool. But I wanted to show you what it'll look like on a pink piece. Now, if you put mica powders on your beads, you will have to seal them. Um, I'm gonna seal them with floor polish probably. Um, so if you can see that, we're getting an, an awesome shine. And these are just it's taking these beads up to the next level. Oh, so pretty. It was already pearlized, um, but this gives it like a nice AB hue. And I don't want a huge, like heavy amount on there. I just like the, um, sorry, I'm trying to get it a little brighter in here. I could show you. I just like that sheen it's giving it. And you, I'll show you uh, probably a little bit better once they're baked. So I'll just keep applying and then I'm gonna flip it over. Um, and then I'm gonna bake on a piece of paper in uh, at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. The paper, it's, it's um, burn point is much higher than that, so it won't burn, it won't scorch, it won't do anything at 275 degrees. And then so that's why you want to make sure that your beads are pretty clean when you um, start with using finishes like this because we won't be able to sand them. Now, if we just wanted to use paint in a, a couple recesses on the beads, then uh, we'd be able to sand later. These beads are staying with me, so I don't really mind. I don't really like sanding either. <laughs> I can do a little bit, but Ugh, it just kind of drives me a little nuts after a while. And we want to smooth that out a little bit. I'm seeing, oh, there we go. Seeing some crispy edges, and we don't want crispy edges. There we go. Just kind of grab a, a, just a little bit and keep going. And if you see any issues, just smooth them out with your fingers and you'll be okay. Goldie just licked my foot to let me know she's here like I can't hear her you guys can probably hear her too so there's our first bead it's so pretty oh, I set it right in some powder so we got to clean that up a little bit we're good and you can just smooth out any um, fingerprints any imperfections there we go and then you can bake but before we bake we have to make our hole right 
So I have a skewer. I got the, these came in like a Sculpey kit, but I'm sure you can um, buy them separately. You can use a toothpick. However, they're not as precise. And there are several different ways that we can um, skewer these. So I'm gonna go right in the middle of the heart right there. And I'm not gonna try and come out the point at the bottom. I'm gonna come out the side a little bit because uh, it just be a little too hard to come right out the bottom. Okay, so there we go. Of course, I put a big fingerprint in there, right? <laughs> but we're good. No, it, that, was his, that was so easy to get the fingerprint off. So here, we have a cute heart bead. And then um, another way, I'm gonna go ahead and put um, some mica on this one. And I'll show you a different way to, to skewer it. Okay, so I have two more um, that I've coated. That one has like a little ding in it, but that's okay. Just with my finger, I rubbed that right um, out of the bead. There's a little bit of an edge back here. We'll clean that up. For um, So I'll just give you two, uh, two more ideas of how to skewer them. I'm gonna remove this one carefully. Okay, so we can do a side hole. Actually, I can give you three more ideas. We can do two different two different side holes. So you can do one right between here, uh, between this top of the heart, and go sideways. You can do it going from like this. So we have like that. And you can wrap it like a bri briolette. You can string it. You can go like this. And we can go straight through. So you'll have a couple different, op well, four different options to string your, your asymmetrical heart. Um, I'll show you this one first. And you guys, you can do this with any shape at all. Just double your clay, triple your clay, make a bead. So there's that one, and I'm gonna smooth out those fingerprints. I just wanted to demonstrate how to put the, the hole there. And then, we have this one where we'll go. I just wanna kind of twist that in. It's kind of, you have to be very careful because you don't want the middle or the skewer coming out of the middle of the bead. And, and believe me, it, it's happened several times before. Just gonna have to, to practice. And then you're gonna see it coming out the side. For one that's this long, I'm gonna take it right out right when I see it coming out the other side and I'm gonna put it in going the other way so it doesn't distort the bead too much. Oh, see, and then we came out the wrong side. There we go, and then I'll just kind of fix that little oopsie right there. So there are three different ways, and then I haven't finished these beads, but I can do this first. And then you can put one, you can put it right through here. And you can always make that hole larger once you've, um, once you've baked your bead, so there's a nice charm. And then we can put a hole right there. So how many ways is that? Five different ways to pierce the same bead. And I'll clean these up. I'm gonna go ahead and bake. I bake mine for an hour at 275 degrees. You, the minimum you would wanna do is 15 minutes per quarter inch. However, I always do an hour. It just makes for more sturdy beads. Um, I'll go ahead and bake these after I get my um, finish on the rest of the pile, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, here are our beads fresh out of the oven. They've got such a wonderful sheen on them. And um, I can you can always make the holes bigger by using a drill afterwards. As you can see, the um, mica powder isn't sealed in yet. I'm gonna use, um, I have Revive It from, I um, can't remember the brand. It's called Revive It, it's floor polish. I think I'm gonna try painting it on. Uh, normally I would dip these, but um, you <laughs> takes a while for them to cool and then um, I'll have to string them and I think I'm just gonna take the easy way out and paint on the, the the finish so I poured some into a cap this stuff smells great too by the way <laughs> and um, it's like six bucks a bottle and the bottles huge seven maybe um, these are still a little warm I'm gonna wait until they completely cool and then I'll paint on the finish 
Okay, my beads are cool. Um, and as you can see, I started here. The thing is, if, when you string these and then dip them, you're getting all sides at once. Um, me painting it on, I'm gonna have to do two, two different sets. And if you wanna do more than one coat, then you're gonna have to do it more than once. So for each side, um, I'm just gonna lightly brush over the top. You can see it's leaving um, a nice sheen. That'll, it, it's not gonna uh, result and that being it being that shiny once it's finished it'll be a little bit shiny but not that shiny and because uh, it's just wet right now so I'm gonna finish these up um, each side of, uh, the first side of each beat and then um, the sides sorry the I'm doing the top of each bead and then I'll do the sides and you don't have to dip it every single time because the brush has more than enough paint on it not um, the brush has more than enough uh, polish on it. I love how holographic, not holographic, but um, the Aurora Borealis is showing. And you just want to make sure they're not touching each other because they'll get stuck together and you don't want that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and let those dry. I'm going to do the other side and then I'll be back once they're finished. Okay, so here's our finished bead. I've also um, drilled with my Dremel and a very small um, drill bit through the hole that I created in the top. I tried drilling through the bottom on a couple of them and they ended up coming out in other places of the beads and I kind of ruined them. So um, I'll be using those in something else. So I went ahead and drilled after I finished painting both sides with the um, uh, floor polish. Now you don't have to use floor polish. You could use liquid Sculpey. You could use um, Sculpey. I think there's a, a gloss coating. There's a Fimo one. Um, there you could use water-based Verithane um, spray or the type you paint on. You could use resin. There are a lot of different um, things you can coat your beads with. It doesn't have to be floor polish. So I'm going to make one earring <laughs> and I'm going to stick um, a head pin through our hole. So he's gonna kinda hang a little wonkily. That's not a word, but I'm gonna make it a word today. Um, I'm gonna put in a uh, spacer bead to fit in the, the drop of the heart there. I found a metal rose. I couldn't find its twin, that's why I'm not making a, a, the, uh, an actual pair of earrings. I, uh, I have it somewhere, I know for sure, but I'm not gonna show you a pair of earrings today. And then um, I grabbed one of these crystals that I got from Carmine. He sent me um, an amazing um, friend mail package. If you haven't watched that, check that out. So I'm gonna put the crystal on. It's like a nice Ale uh, like AB Alexandrite color. And then I'm gonna put another one of our spacers on top. And then um, I need to grab a um, pair of pliers and my nippers and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm gonna make a simple loop here. Even though we have enough wire to wire wrap, I'm just gonna do a simple loop today. Um, I'm gonna fold this, cut, mm, probably about a half inch. Grab my wire, or I'm sorry, my pliers. <laughs> it's late, it's like 12.30 in the morning. <laughs> so that's why I got pliers and wires mixed up. Um, and then, we're just going to make a loop on top and move, do it kind of tight. It, this bead, this earring is going to move around and that'll make it kind of pretty. Um, and then I have an ear wire. I'm going to go ahead and very carefully open this up. You always want to twist. You don't want to pull. And the thing is, if you sometimes these wires or ear wires are kind of flimsy, so you want to just be careful. You don't put, don't put too much stress on it. And then we'll just kind of hook oh goodness hook that on twist it back closed and there's our little cute earring oh my goodness and like I said it, you don't have to make hearts but I love this little wonky heart um, you can do this with any cutter um, check out from the heart supplies I love their cutters I have more cutters from them than anyone else and there's a reason because they work <laughs> they continue to work so and they're fantastic um, and Rhonda's pretty awesome. She, if you're looking for something, she will help you find it. That's for sure. So 
Um, yeah, this is just such a sweet little earring. I'm going to make the twin and give it to my mom for Valentine's Day. And uh, I'm so excited. I'm going to be making, you're going to, you guys are going to see more beads like this, not maybe not hearts, but with this type of um, technique where we double the clay and use um, either embossing folders. You can also make um, some canes and stick it to your, your, the front of your clay as a veneer before you um, cut. You can make, uh, you can paint something on there. You can use a silk screen. You can do anything and then cut it in the shape of your bead and make it like this. Um, and you don't have to use a head pin. You, there are little screws that you can use to, to embed in your clay, but I thought I would just start out this way. We'll probably revisit this in the future. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe um, and check out my bead group. We're having a fantastic color challenge. Everybody's having so much fun. I need to catch up. <laughs> and uh, stay tuned for Goldie. She's super cute. Bye-bye.